Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we will be talking about the long range pattern. Now, you know, the last few days, I don't think I've, yeah, I haven't uploaded a video in like four or three days, and not only because some of the days I, I didn't really have time to do it, but we're also, I mean, yesterday I was, uh, planning on recording a video but i looked at the weather models and relatively there just wasn't anything substantial to talk about it's been a very quiet pattern ever since that last winter storm and, and it seems <clears throat> that that pattern will uh, continue <clears throat> at least for a good decent bit and then this long range activity that i'm kind of talking about is pretty far-fetched and the model support is pretty lackluster but there are starting to sh uh, be some kind of signs of consistency so i kind of want to go over that now before we get into this uh, you know we, we talk about the weather here I'm an enthusiast hobbyist. I go out this far into the long range because it's fun not really to even inform you guys that much because this is a lot of this is kind of speculation but it's mainly for the fun of it. Um, so if you like this type of stuff you know consider checking out the channel you could like and subscribe if you want but obviously watch the video first if you're not decided yet and if you have any comments or you know kind of uh, concerns or whatnot please them down below in the comments the section uh, below. All right so <clears throat> Let's start off by looking at, your, I guess, the National Weather Service uh, Weather Ready Nation map. And let me zoom out of my local office and let's take a look at the entire <clears throat> United States. And do note that it's rather quiet. Again, as I've been saying, the only big watches that kind of affect the, or I guess, United States in a, in, a, in a big way are the high wind watches and warnings across northwest, kind of the, the, the Great Plains, Upper Plains, and then also a, a few areas of winter weather advisory across the northeast, which is actually for a decent amount of snow that could be occurring. <clears throat> but again, a smaller system, nothing huge. You could see three to four inches across New Hampshire and into Maine. And let me actually click just towards the north, and I'm assuming here is where some of these amounts may be a bit um, higher. Yeah, and you can see four to seven inch in inches where that advisory is. So a decent uh, bit of snow for the main area. Nothing, again, extraordinary, but you can see cities like Augusta could pick up a few inches, Bangor, Caribou, and uh, whatnot, cities in that uh, in that advisory area. So let me go back now and show you that, again, the rest of the United States is darn quiet. Anywhere from the west, the north, the south, other than that little tip of, um, <clears throat> of Maine. And let me show you some of these weather models now and show you why it's been kind of so quiet or you know and how long it, it will continue to be quiet so basically the main <clears throat> reason is that there isn't any uh, the, the jet stream isn't really strong right now it's it's kind of more towards the north you can see that there's there's a bit of cold air it's not a completely warm pattern it's not a completely cold pattern it's it's a very it's a kind of a I guess you could describe it almost as a zonal uh, flow but not really because this jet stream is slightly tilted in a sense that it is bringing a lot of uh, the activity kind of from the northwest towards the south and east and along that are these little clips and you can see that's today's system where the advisory is issued and into tomorrow. But look, as I run this forward, let me just put this forward. You can see clipper after clipper. And again, nothing big out of individual clippers. Um, and uh, by the way, just ignore the timing because I'm just kind of trying to show you the, the theme of the clippers. But I do want to say that in this time frame, that the first kind of <clears throat> storm threat that some models and some people have been talking about there is this um, uh, weekend system on the f 14th, right? The uh, Valentine's, I think that's that's when it is. And uh, notice that <clears throat> this is what they think, you know, th this is what um, maybe the concern. And it's a potential <clears throat> for sure. Uh, models like the European yesterday showed a big system, but the, many have backed off ever since then. And to be honest, even with this thing, um, if it were to move closer towards the land, it's a bit too progressive, meaning it's a bit too quick, and even if it hit the United States, I do think that it would mainly be just um, a quick blow of a few inches, nothing extraordinary, so we'll have to see, but I think it is uh, definitely something that's not going to be too concerning. It could actually be a decent bit of snow into North Carolina, South Carolina, with a little bit of back, uh, back piece up there. That could be probably the biggest part if that system were to occur that way. Notice, again, another clipper, a bit of cold air. Very warm towards the south and west, but even the northwest getting impacted by some cooler air. And you can see another clipper coming in. This is the 17th. That's This is where a clipper kind of uh, develops into a kind of a wicked system. Nothing huge in terms of snowfall, but a wicked. I mean, it has a lot of wind, a lot of snow showers, snow squalls. That's definitely something to watch for. And a, quite a bit of colder for February, that is. And notice another clipper. And this is where a storm potential kind of gets going. And this is what I'm talking about in the long range. You can see uh, there are a few models <clears throat> that I'll show you in just a second that develop the same system that the GFS develops at around uh, the Sunday 20th. Which, again, very, very 
far out, right? Uh, some models develop this a few uh, kind of 20 to 30 hours earlier. That's our, you know, kind of our biggest storm threat for now, at least. And you can see it's pretty far out. It is a decent system if it were to occur, but again, there isn't enough support in uh, the modelings, I guess, to call it a system threat. Though I will show you why I think that it's pretty um, interesting to kind of focus on that thing. And notice, uh, again, more Clippers following that. So total snowfall footprint, it's mainly going to be towards the north, right? But where it is snowing with those Clippers, there could be actually a decent, <laughs> let me fix that, sorry, there could actually be a decent bit of snow. Notice that across the <clears throat> or Can um, Canadian and the United States border is traveling anywhere from Minnesota all the way down through the Great Lakes north of Michigan. Uh, the, the lake effect will be pretty uh, decent, if not significant, from some of this. You could see areas like Wisconsin, uh, northern Wisconsin, Michigan, northern Minnesota getting up to maybe a foot of snow in the next 10 days with that, with those clippers. Same with a lot of large Canadian cities. You're getting a lot of, you know, Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa, Quebec. No single big monster for you, but system after system after system of these little storms could pile up a, you know a decent bit if not a very good amount of snow and obviously this does include some of those bigger systems over here a lot of the snow won't be occurring but you can see that's still a very decent snowfall footprint in terms of total accumulated moisture there's not much rain towards the south you can see most of the precip is where that where those uh, where those clippers track so that is a GFS I do want to show you it's a noon model run just to show you that it's been uh, consistently very quiet so if you're watching this and you're wondering you know what the rest of this week will be I can't really go over every single location, but generally towards the north and east in, uh, in this general area, it will be quite a bit uh, cooler. And here will be quite a bit warmer. Now, I wouldn't say that this is the exact, you know, this is where on Wednesday particularly the kind of the dividing line is. But uh, this this does kind of go back and forth. Sometimes this goes towards the north and east. Sometimes it goes more towards the south and west. So it's that type of pattern that the northeastern third of the country will be kept cooler while the southwestern third will be actually uh, pretty darn warm, if not in some of these locations, very warm, as you can see right there for the plains. But again, that's going to keep these little clipper systems going behind each one of them. There's a reinforcing shot of cooler air. You're, again, nothing too significant. Even if you're impacted you're, by this a clipper across, say, you know, you're, uh, the UP, you could get a few inches of snow for sure. But by itself, this shouldn't, uh, you know, cripple or anything, uh, this area. Notice that uh, the model run at, uh, uh, at noon today showed that snowstorm threat across the northeast. It, you know, kind of hard to call it a snowstorm, just blew off the coast, followed by yet another clipper. But then, if you recall, the GFS <clears throat> latest model run showed a system around this time frame. And do look that... Uh, we do have another system that the GFS shows, or another model, and, you know, so it's been kind of consistent with that. It's for two models now that's been showing that at least this this decent threat. And you can see that the activity after that may be a bit more enhanced, so we have more flow of moisture from the south. But um, let's take a look at the morning one and see if it's just been consistent enough. So again, you can see a series of little clippers. Let's watch that weakened system. You can see again off the coast. And then around this time frame, there's that system. Again, it was a bit further out today at 6 o'clock in the morning because less time has passed. But look, you know, again, it's been decently consistent that a more active pattern could be coming towards a very long range. But again, it's it's pretty darn long out, and I don't think there's any encouraging signs of this um, being more in the, I guess, the short term. But take a look at the Canadian. <clears throat> Another model, again, up until I would say, you know, at least through this upcoming weekend, nothing significant. Even if areas do get impacted, say, here with the Canadian showing a clipper that shows snow across Wisconsin, Illinois, um, North Dakota, Minnesota. You know, this isn't massive. It does bring a bit of snow, maybe a bit of rain, maybe a bit of cold air, some brisk winds, maybe a bit of lake effect. That's probably the biggest impact from this from lake effect. Other than that, this thing, um, you know, the, the pattern is remarkably, remarkably quiet and nothing extraordinary. Again, there's that weakened system potential pretty far off the coast. I wouldn't worry about that, really. But notice, if you recall, the GFS starts developing a system around this time frame. The, G the Canadian does as well, just a few hours earlier, around 30 to 40 hours earlier, earlier, which seems like a lot, but in the long range, that's really just a few. And notice that, again, it's a pretty intense system, the biggest one we've seen since, obviously, the one that just passed, and that would obviously offer pretty good snowfall footprint, and actually, according to this, a decent amount of chilly air. So, again, um, up until that system, though, you could see that the total snowfall would be limited towards the northern United States, you know, maybe getting into Indiana, Ohio, the southern portions of, uh, I guess, the Midwest or the northern United States, the northern United States, but still, even where it does snow, the um, you know, that far south, 
relatively it's it's nothing too significant now let's take a look at another model i just want to show you the european model uh let's look at the one yesterday for midnight because i want to show you this is one of the models that showed that northeast system this upcoming weekend or like that um nor'easter again there's that system today you could see a decently sized decent uh, precip from that but other than that nothing significant notice friday right we get that little wicked system across the midwest some showers snow across michigan maybe detroit getting in a little bit of some snow uh, southern canada um you know northern minnesota wisconsin the up and then this thing does develop this uh system right here you can see uh, coming from the south we see these uh, these jet stream dip kind of get uh, more amplified and we see that system actually intensify into a decent system again this is like the strongest case scenario probably with this system and you can see even with that it's really nothing too extraordinary it's a powerful system but not not anything uh, legendary and uh, just to show you the snowfall footprint from that system would be actually pretty remarkably mis uh, miserable in terms of the, the magnitude nothing really extraordinary here you can see right there maybe you're right and again that 10 inches seems like a lot and, and it, it is but again recall that the most latest nor'easter that we saw like, jumped 25 26 up to 30 inches in some of these locations that's a big nor'easter maybe you know 10 inches and it's across a very very small area some snow back into here again nothing that would warrant a big headlines or anything like that even if it were <clears throat> to occur like the European showed, which, by the way, ever since this model run, it has backed off on that system. But do note that it introduced a bit of warmer air, maybe some Pacific, or I guess, a moisture coming in the long range. So, again, maybe hinting at a more active pattern. You can see right there, that was yesterday at midnight, or today at midnight. Today at noon, you can see this is what it showed again. Series of clippers, little storms, nothing extraordinary. Um, you know, bouts of chillier air and warmer air fighting back. But even where it's cooler, it's not extremely cold or extremely colder it's 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 marginal i would say it's probably going to be more warm where it's warmer than cold where it's uh colder than average and let me actually just show you <clears throat> some of these temperatures and right there let's let's extend this out you know into sunday right there during the day you know it, that's chilly for sure so that's overnight right there during the day that's definitely chilly but it's not something that you could see in february across northern minnesota and southern canada and you can see across the south it, you could see that spring is starting to get acted right we're starting to see those uh warmer temperatures those this contrast starting to grow, which, you know, could actually offer for a good snowstorm potentials, a lot of moisture, a lot of cold air and whatnot. But notice, with that most recent model, and the European takes that off, and really ignores that threat. And then do note that in that your time frame where that GFS and Canadians start showing more systems, so does a European, and it does show a storm. You're right, you could see it's a pretty nasty storm. And again, it's just a different layout. If you recall, the, the GFS showed a more of a system kind of a further out around to our 260 to 70 that was around the same positioning the canadian showed a system as less further out just a bit more north to south oriented system kind of really south to north i should say this one's a bit more southwest to northeast so again they all show a pretty big system which is actually pretty remarkable that they all show a decently sized system this far out which is again why i'm saying that this long range pattern may be uh, active but Regardless, anything that kind of comes after this pattern that we have right now will be considered active because of how remarkably unactive this current pattern is. Now, let me show you a few <coughs> ensembles. So these are models, 51 of them. I won't show you all of them, but I'll show you their five-day period. So this is 120 hours out. And the, basically the common theme, uh, I'm just sharing on random or clicking on random models. The common theme is that they all share is that it's remarkably quiet. Again, the northern United States getting some of those clippers. And maybe the northeast getting in on those a uh, bit of those heavier mounts. The northeast, I should say, really just Maine, New Hampshire, maybe in southern Canada with help from the ocean. And, uh, you know, so again, the next 120 hours, five days out, nothing remarkable. That takes us through the weekend. Now, through the Saturday time frame, through Thursday, so kind of uh, next week, you can see we start seeing more activity a bit further inland. We see, first off, a, a little threat right there for, again, that nor'easter maybe. Some models agreeing with that. Some showing a decent swath of snow, but again, at varying places, varying locations, with actually, you know, quite a bit agreeing that there will be some sort of activity. There are a few that show something like this, which indicates a more quiet and calm pattern continuing but th there's few of those and it's more of the models that show a more active pattern you can see again right there too right here that don't really show much activity and then there's some that you know actually quite a few that show a scenario that would lead to quite a bit of more snow and i'm just again clicking on random models that you could kind of look through and you could see that there definitely is an I I increase in the activity but again nothing to really 
make huge headlines about right now. And notice as I click on the, the you know that 10 to 15 day outlook. So at this point, this is pretty far out, and you can see that the models are all over the place. Some are showing a very active pattern with kind of you know a more uh, powerful snowstorm track. Some do that as well. Just further towards the north and west of the relative previous locations of different models. This one shows a more north zonal flow, but towards the north, assuming it would be pretty warm, probably anywhere south of, say, that um, kind of uh, Illinois, Iowa, Nebraska, you know, Wyoming, pretty much anywhere south of the line I'm making with the cursor. Um, and uh, do note that, again, there is a confidence that there will be a more active pattern. But again, all it takes is a two, you know, maybe one or two bigger storms to make it an active pattern compared to what we have right now which is remarkably quiet so as of now no big systems are coming um and again a lot of people i've been seeing kind of saying oh a big system maybe potentially coming this upcoming weekend it's it's the evidence is is, is just it's not enough to support such a claim um <clears throat> maybe eventually there will be something and you know it could definitely still change and let me just show you the gefs Click on the northeast, which again, where is this, which is the area this could get impacted. Let's go through um, the 14th, and you can see that <clears throat> there are, you know, those clippers. Again, that's not really no model here shows that nor'easter. If anything, it would occur right there on that 14th, and you can see a few do show it. One, two, three, four mainly. I am seeing right now that show a big system. Some other ones, yeah, a lot of them don't. So again, four models out of 31 is rather unremarkable. And in the future, you can see stuff does get active, but those are different separate systems that all of them kind of show at different stages. So yeah, um, again, winter's not done, but for now, a rather quiet pattern. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next episode. See ya. Bye.